So the Broncos gave up a sixth round pick for Teddy Bridgewater. Um, the Panthers are even paying seven million of his salary for the year. The Broncos are paying three. So the Broncos have a three million hit on the cap, and they only gave up a sixth round pick for Teddy Bridgewater. And I know we gave Teddy a hard time last time. I don't remember what his name, Omar for the Panthers. I don't, I'm just gonna call him Omar for the Panthers. <laughs> Um, I was God getting, gave us a hard time about Teddy. I was getting killed. Bro, I had like five <laughs> people comment about how bad Teddy no Bridgewater was. Yes, you got to check it after this. I got <gasps> killed oh, in the man. comment section. My goodness. But you want to know what? I'll say this. I think it's telling when a team is willing to give away their starting quarterback, who they paid a really big amount of money mm-hmm. for a six-round pick, and they're going to pay three-quarters of his salary. Mm-hmm. That says a lot. And I know last time we had talked about Teddy Bridgewater, I felt as though he didn't get a fair shake. Maybe I sure. saw something different. Because I went to, you know, there are people, some people in the comments made some really good points about how, yeah, he puts up a lot of yards when it comes time to score, when it comes time to make big plays and big time moments to win games. He can't do mm-hmm. it. And they are right by that. They sure. are correct. And, Absolutely. you know, it's tricky, right? Because it makes me concerned. I'm happy for the Broncos. I think this is a good step in the right direction. Is it the solution? I don't know. I don't so, know. So here's here's how I'll put it. The there every team has a, a way that they're built, right? Um, the pay, pay, um the Chiefs are built around Patrick Mahomes' playmaking ability. They gave him weapons. They said, "Go make plays. You need to make plays for us to win." By the way. You don't make plays, we ain't going to win. Look at the Super Bowl. He tried his best to make plays. Everyone around him kind of tanked. But still, like you, you, this is a playmaking roster. Mm-hmm. The Bucks, Tom Brady, distribute the football to your weapons. We will give you a running game. We'll give you a sick defense and an offensive line. You be the noggin behind the entire offense. Make it work. Uh, the Broncos in 2015, we said, we're going to give you one of the best defenses of all time, Paid Manning. Don't we know you all. Up. We know you lost a little bit on your arm. Don't throw picks. Mm-hmm. Get us to the end of the game so the defense can seal the deal. That has been Denver's formula since Peyton Manning has been here after his big record-breaking season. Mm-hmm. We have been a team that builds strictly, mostly around defense and a running game and said, the quarterback, don't blow it. Literally, just don't blow it. We don't need you to be clutch. We don't need you to be crazy. Just don't blow it. Last year, we did not have that. Correct. Drew blew it a lot. <laughs> um, Teddy Bridgewater, is is he going to make plays in the big spots? People have made the point. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. A lot of the times last year, the answer was no. They were in tight games, not thanks to their defense. Um, yeah. But <laughs> for the rest of the game, Teddy was doing great. But then all of a sudden, it came down to it. Defense couldn't make a stop. Other teams scored. It was tight. Needed a score. Couldn't do it at the end of the game. Um, can he do it? Yes. Will he? I don't know. But I think the Broncos are in a different situation than the Panthers. I'm not saying better. They're both very similar teams in terms of their – you all right there, light? Sometimes my light just turns off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very professional. Yeah, right. Um, they're both very similar in terms of their skill level yep. in the teams. They're right next to each other in the draft. They've been that way since they faced each other in the Super Bowl. They've Correct. been consistently in the same placing in their division, all that kind of stuff. So they're very similar in terms of skill level, but they're both built different, very differently. Broncos are more defense-centric, good yep. wide receivers, but we need a quarterback just to distribute the ball. Panthers always need to rely on a playmaker. Correct. Look at Cam Newton. Cam Newton was that playmaker. You don't get much more than the opposite than Teddy Bridgewater. Um, so I think Teddy Bridgewater will have a better fit here. Yes. Granted, again, those people made great points. Yes, Teddy was not the playmaker you needed in crunch time. Got it. With one of these guys in the draft, I'm sorry, not the draft, Sam Darnold, he's a playmaker. He'll be your playmaker. He will be able to make those plays at the end of the game when you really need it most. You better hope your defense shows up, though. Right. But I think Teddy Bridgewater is a good asset. If nothing else, it gives um, the Broncos competition at quarterback. Correct. If they still love Drew Locke and camp, and he still does really well, and they say, Drew, we're going to ride with you, but you got someone right on your butt. He's been a career starter for two different franchises. Not to mention, 
one of the franchises is our GM's former franchise. Well, hey. So watch it. You are not safe. And if Drew responds to the pressure and does well, matures a little bit because he is a, he's a rather immature guy, if he can mature a little bit and stick it out and say, you know what? No, I'm the guy. You're not taking my job. You guys made a mistake. Give it up a six-round pick and $3 million, whatever. Yeah, right. And Whew. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove you wrong. I'm going to say I'm the starter and I'm going to make plays and take you to the playoffs and do what we got to do. Um, Cause at the end of the day, we don't like the way drew plays. His stats are very similar to what Josh Allen had for his first 16 ish starts in the NFL. Granted, it doesn't look the same. No, nope. <laughs> You got to look all. a little bit past the numbers, but what do you think of the trade? Do you think they start Teddy Bridgewater off the bat? Oh, man. Well, I think, like you had said, I think it all comes down to competition. Who looks better? Sure. Right? Mm-hmm. I think the one thing with Teddy Bridgewater, I think this is a better fit for him. Why? For mm-hmm. every reason, every point you just made, Andrew, the Broncos are a defense-centric team, right? So they're very defensive-minded, which is mm-hmm. good for a person like Teddy Bridgewater who seems to not be a playmaker in those big moments. He's mm-hmm. more of a distributor. Distribute the yep. ball to your playmakers, get a lot of yak, yards after catch, Mm-hmm. And let your wide receivers do what they do. I mean, if you look at mm-hmm. Teddy Bridgewater with the Panthers last year, a lot of his 1,000-yard receivers got a lot of yak, yards after catch. Mm-hmm. It wasn't him bombing it deep or anything like that. And I think it's going to be the same kind of concept here where I think if he can just distribute the ball correctly to his playmakers in Denver and allow that defense, put his defense in a good place because you know the defense is going to put Teddy in a good place. I mm-hmm. think they're going to complement each other a lot better than the compliment than, than how he was complimented when he was in Carolina. I don't feel like that defense complimented Teddy Bridgewater's play style very well, but I think in Denver, I think that's a much better fit because it'll take some of the pressure off him. Sure. And I think a depressurized Teddy Bridgewater is a good de- Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, you look when he went in as a backup in in um in New Orleans for the Saints. He won all five games. Why? Because he had no pressure. He was a backup. There was no expectations. Just don't blow it. And he, and he had a gr- he had a great roster ball. of talent around yeah. him. Great running back. Good receivers. The defense was humming at that point in the season. So if the Broncos can emulate a lot of what he had in uh, in New Orleans, and even when he had late in his career, late in his tenure at uh, Minnesota. Right. I think they could have a lot of success. If Justin Fields is available at number nine, will the Broncos take him? Oh, man. That's tough. I would or you, say... Or you, do you think they trade out? If I'm a Denver Broncos fan and Justin Fields is there in nine, you got to take him. you got to take him. This, this is Three the year you need to figure out your quarterback. Mm-hmm. How many years are you going to prolong your quarterback situation mm-hmm. before you realize you're just wasting years on your talent? Mm-hmm. trying to screw around with quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Find somebody. you got to get a quarterback taken care of. Whenever you guys have a good quarterback, you win Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. I mean, you literally. got to – Literally. <laughs> literally. The, it, the stats, the seasons, everything says that. When you guys have a competent quarterback, you either go to or win Super Bowls. I don't understand what's so difficult. Get a guy. you got to get a guy. I think it would be crazy awesome if we got Justin Fields too, because like then you're just up in the odds. You got three guys, one of them taken in the second, one of them's a veteran who who knows his stuff, and the other one's Justin Fields. Like that would be pretty hype. But I think I think if he does fall to nine, people are going to be calling Denver and giving them offers they can't refuse. Mm. Because other teams are gonna want their franchise guy too. So if we can somehow muster two first round picks out of somebody and then start collecting defense make it even more solidified, like a guy like Micah Parsons, which I love out of Penn State, mm-hmm. or a guy like J.C. Horn, solidify that that corner spot, or um, just any like any of these big uh, Awusu, like, the, like just guys that are going to tear up defensive line, linebackers. Linebackers are a big weak spot for us. We haven't had mm-hmm. a good middle linebacker since Todd Davis and uh, I'm sorry since Danny Trevathan yeah Trevathan. Davis, okay Trevathan was great he helped us win that Super Bowl in 2015 so um if we can solidify those spots I think that makes our team very well rounded and then it really says all right whoever this quarterback is you better succeed because you have literally no excuse yep I, I mean honestly I think if 
if you're a Broncos fan, if you're not going to take a quarterback at nine, you either take Micah Parsons or you have to take an offensive lineman. Your offensive line has been hot garbage. Mm-hmm. Hot garbage since 2016. It's been bad, bro. Mm-hmm. Or Rashawn bad. Slater if he falls. Or um, Penny Sewell if he ends up falling. He's there's not. Only, there's He's only not. so much talent in the top 10. So dep- whichever one of those two falls, that you you will have someone great at, t- at 9. Yeah, so I think um, if you don't take quarterback, Micah Parsons or lineman. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got to. Those are your two biggest holes, I think, if, if you're yep. a Broncos fan. I mean, it's blatantly yep. obvious. Mm-hmm. 